Hello and thank you for joining me today. Today I'm sharing with you a mixed media moth that I created using lots of my favorite Finnabar products. This moth took me several days, so this video is sped up quite a bit. If you have any questions or anything that you're unsure of, or if I've cut it out, please just leave me a comment if you want and I'll be happy to get back to you. Also in the bottom right hand corner of my screen, you can subscribe to the channel just by clicking and that would be greatly appreciated as well. Someday I hope to get this channel over a thousand subscribers. Anyhow, as you can see, I've started with some graphite paste and I'm covering the entire moth through um, one of Finnabar's stencils. I'm not sure, I think this is the Swirly Florals, I think? But again, all the products that I use will be listed down below and you'll be able to find it there. The graphite texture paste is one of my absolute favorites, especially if I'm using black um, gesso in a project. It just, the texture that comes through is, it's stunning. Now I've moved on to some metallic paint and I'm covering the tiny bits that I want to accent with color. This piece has a lot of metallic in it, but I wanted to have just tiny little bits of color shining through. So on the moth's head, that light bulb is, and that's why I wanted to have um, the blue in the background. And then inside of the locket is blue, and I add some glitter to that later. Here you can see I've realized that I need to add some gesso because these are the parts that I have to adhere, and they're not black yet. <laughs> So that's what I was doing there. And you can kind of see the little light bulb that I painted blue. And then you'll see that I'm adhering my locket. And this is, for example, something that I did and then I walked away because this is a heavy piece and the gel needs time to set because if not, you're fighting the pieces and they're falling off. So this was one of those times that I put it on and I walked away. Like I said, this did happen over several days. So if this video is jumpy, it's because you know, this project left the table, it came back to the table, I walked away, I went away for a couple days and I came back, I moved pieces around. Pieces like this don't always come together in 10-15 minutes, um, that's for sure. Usually it's days or hours and it's just edited down so you can kind of see the process. Anyhow, I ramble. So here I am adding some mechanicals and my thought process with this was one side of the moth would be more floral and the other side would be more gears. Kind of showing my two different sides. Um, I love all things flowers but I love the mixed media grunge um, steampunk style as well. So that's why this moth is kind of split in half, kind of torn in two. So now I'm working a little bit with the gears and the clocks um, and I'm, these are some resin pieces and some metallic pieces that I have in my stash. So some of them you can see a little bit clearer and some are a little bit rough to see. But I'm just adhering them all in place. And I'm not covering everything because I have that texture in the background so I don't need to cover every little piece on this moth. Um, just some accent pieces to make it stand out. Now I went ahead and I'm going to stamp my fingers and with movie magic everything has turned black so there was no reason for you to see me painting my moth black with the black gesso you get the concept so now I've moved on to my color now I'm using some Finnabar um, metallic paint but I'm not using them just like a brush on paint I'm kind of using them like a watercolor I'm adding the paint and I'm spraying them with water and I'm moving the color around to where I want it I want the paint to be in the nooks and crannies and not on top so that's why I'm kind of washing it away on the top and having it flow into all the crevices and all the tiny details so I'm going to continue to do that with my mix of blues and greens and I'm drying in between so I don't get muddy colors but again, I've chopped this and trimmed it down so you didn't have to see too much of it. Now my color was very vibrant and I didn't want it to be this vibrant. I wanted it there, but I wanted it subtly in the background. So I'm just taking a little bit of black gesso and I'm dry brushing it on just to tone down the color a tiny bit and make it a little bit more subtle. So that's what you'll see me do here. And I do that on both sides. Uh, I do leave the locket and I avoid the light bulb for the moth's head as well. Now you'll see me 
from time to time move the paintbrush over to my hand and that's just me brushing off some of the gesso onto my hand. The tip that I have for any kind of dry brushing is less is more. It's better to go back multiple times and with multiple coats than to try to, try to do too much at one time. You can always add more, you can always take it away. So I'm just gonna continue dry brushing and there you can kind of see where it's getting toned down and it makes it just a little bit softer. Now I haven't adhered the center of this locket because I'm gonna put um, glitter and everything in the, cent in the inside. So it's still off to the side at this point in time. Now it's time for me to bring in the metallic aspect of this. So I'm gonna use some Firebird wax and I'm just gonna be lightly going over everything. Now for this, I, I really try to keep my wax light because I don't want to take over projects. This project does have quite a bit of wax on it, um, more than most of my projects, but I really wanted it to have that metallic look to it. So I'm carefully going around the moth's head so I'm not getting it on that resin piece and I'm focusing my metallic primarily on the body where the locket is because that is my focal point of this moth. So I wanna make sure that that's the first thing that you see when you look at it. I did decide that I wanted to add a couple pieces over on the floral side, so I added that and you'll see it in the next clip. Next, I came in with a little bit of white gold and this is kind of a cool color to contradict or compliment, I guess would be the right word the firebird so i'm adding touches of that and you'll see me continue to do that and i'm just using a little bit on my hand rubbing some off and then using it on my finger again it's the same thing as dry brushing less is always more and too much is something that is very difficult to fix it's not unfixable you can always fix something there's always another way don't give up Anyhow, so I'm just moving my moth around until I'm happy with the wax and just adding it in little nooks and crannies and trying to really push it in to pick up all the little details that are hidden around the edges, on the gears, on the sides, around the wire that's wrapped around the antenna. There's beads up there as well. There's lots of little details in this moth that really do grab your attention and that's why I'm focusing so much wax in the center so you do look at that focal point first. And now I'm even coming in really heavy handed with a brush. So again, if you like this video, please don't forget to, forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you would. It would be greatly appreciated. Um, you can also find my Instagram channel at L Erickson designs 23 and you can see my projects there as well I know that this drags on just a tiny bit but I wanted to make sure you saw it I did add a little bit of microbeads off camera when it was dry I did forget to turn on the camera for that last little bit but here you can see the final details I hope that you've enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed my process. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.